The idea sounds almost too good to be true, feed garbage into a high-tech machine and produce clean hydrogen fuel. Yet that's exactly what Hydrogen Tay UK Limited aims to do. Founded in 2023 and based in Kent, the company wants to build the UK's first full-scale waste to hydrogen facility, a project estimated at more than $120 million. If successful, it could transform how the world thinks about both garbage and green energy. Every year, the United Kingdom produces over 200 million tons of waste. Much of it is plastic, biomass, tires, and municipal refuse, the kind of material too contaminated or complex to recycle. Some of it gets shipped abroad, some burned in incinerators, and some ends up in landfills, releasing methane and carbon dioxide for decades. The energy transition has many heroes, solar, wind, EVs, but few have looked at the mountains of trash and seen an untapped energy source. Hydrogen Tay is one of them. At the heart of their approach is a technology called plasma-assisted gasification, an ultra-high temperature process that breaks down waste at the molecular level. Instead of burning it like incinerators do, the system uses plasma torches to generate lightning hot temperatures exceeding 3000 degrees Celsius. Inside this chamber, waste is not burned but disassembled, transformed into a mix of hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and trace gases. This mixture, known as syngas, becomes the foundation for something cleaner. Through a secondary reaction known as the water gas shift, the carbon monoxide reacts with steam to create more hydrogen and carbon dioxide. The CO2 is captured, and what remains is fuel cell-grade hydrogen, one of the purest forms of clean energy known. It's an elegant idea. The solid leftovers become an inert, glass-like slag that can be reused in construction. The captured CO2 can be stored or utilized in industrial processes. The result, zero landfill, minimal emissions, and valuable fuel. A true circular economy in motion. Imagine, the narrator says, if every city could power its buses and factories with the very waste it once paid to bury. Kent, the chosen site for Hydrogen Tay's first plant, offers both symbolism and strategy. It's where the old meets the new, a region with industrial heritage, access to the port of Ramsgate, and proximity to waste sources and transport networks. The project promises local jobs, cleaner air, and a new chapter in the UK's renewable story. According to reports from Fuel Cells Works, Hydrogen Tay's $120 million investment could create hundreds of employment opportunities and position the UK as a leader in waste to hydrogen innovation. The company's founders are not talking about dreams. They're filing permits, securing partnerships, and conducting environmental impact studies. Their goal isn't just one plant, it's a replicable blueprint for circular energy. If the model works in Kent, it can spread across the UK, turning the nation's waste crisis into a distributed hydrogen economy. Hydrogen Tay's website lays out a simple but powerful idea, our process is designed for what others reject. We close the loop by converting end-of-life materials into the clean fuels of tomorrow. Every ton of waste they process represents avoided methane, prevented plastic pollution, and captured carbon. And the hydrogen produced could replace fossil fuels in transport, manufacturing, and energy storage. It's a complete reinvention of what waste can mean in a decarbonized future. From an engineering perspective, the efficiency of the process is compelling. For every 100,000 tons of waste processed each year, the system could generate around 15 million kilograms of hydrogen, roughly 500 gigawatt hours of clean energy. That's enough to fuel over 40,000 hydrogen-powered cars annually or offset tens of thousands of tons of diesel use. But the financial side might be even more interesting. Unlike electrolysis, which depends on expensive renewable electricity, Hydrogen Tay earns multiple revenue streams. Waste suppliers pay tipping fees to dispose of garbage. Hydrogen is sold to local off-takers. CO2 credits can be traded or monetized. And even the vitrified slag can be sold for construction use. This multi-revenue model could make waste to hydrogen one of the most financially resilient green technologies in the market. As energy prices fluctuate, the waste stream remains constant. As landfills grow more regulated, the value of diversion increases. In short, the dirtier the world gets, the more valuable hydrogen taze process becomes. But there are challenges, and critics. Environmental groups often question whether gasification truly counts as clean. Can it really achieve fuel cell grade hydrogen purity at scale? What about the CO2, will it genuinely be captured and not vented? And how will communities react to yet another industrial plant, even if it's green? Hydrogen Tay seems aware of this skepticism. 
Their design includes closed-loop emission systems, no visible smoke or odor, and continuous monitoring to ensure safety. They emphasize that this is not incineration, it's molecular recycling at a completely different level. The timing, however, is perfect. The UK government's hydrogen strategy aims for 10 gigawatts of low-carbon hydrogen capacity by 2030, half from green electrolysis and half from alternative low-carbon methods. Waste to hydrogen fits this second category perfectly. It doesn't compete with renewables, it complements them. When the wind isn't blowing or the sun isn't shining, hydrogen from waste keeps flowing. It's dispatchable, flexible, and circular, the kind of hybrid energy model that policymakers crave. If hydrogen taste succeeds, it could turn one of society's greatest liabilities into its most valuable resource. Each garbage truck arriving at their facility could symbolically represent a transfer of pollution into potential, trash in, clean fuel out. It's poetic in a way that only the energy transition can be. Zooming out, this idea is part of a larger global movement. Around the world, innovators are exploring the same frontier, turning waste into clean fuels. In California, SGH2 Energy is building a massive plant to convert waste into hydrogen using gasification. In Japan and France, Waze2H is deploying similar systems for island nations. Even in Singapore, the Tuas Nexus project integrates waste management with energy recovery. But Hydrogen Tay has one advantage, it's working in a country hungry for domestic hydrogen supply and circular economy leadership. The UK has spent decades exporting its waste. Between 2010 and 2020, millions of tons of plastic were shipped to Asia, out of sight, out of mind. But that model is collapsing. Now, with stricter regulations and rising landfill costs, the country needs homegrown solutions. Hydrogen Tay's project could be the symbolic reversal, Britain importing clean tech instead of exporting trash. The narrator's tone deepens, for 200 years, Britain powered the world with coal. Maybe now, from the ashes of its own waste, it can power the future with hydrogen. It's a powerful metaphor, one that blends industrial heritage with environmental redemption. Yet for all the excitement, the hard work lies ahead. Hydrogen Tay must still secure permits, investors, and local approvals. They'll need to prove their emissions are negligible and their economics sustainable. But if the plant breaks ground by 2026 and operates by 2028, it could coincide perfectly with the next wave of hydrogen infrastructure, refueling stations, storage hubs, and mobility projects across the UK. There's also a social angle. The company isn't just building technology, it's building trust. Community engagement, education, and transparency will determine how people perceive this new approach. To many, waste to energy still evokes smokestacks and pollution. Hydrogen Tay must rewrite that narrative, to show that this is not about burning trash, but re-engineering matter into value. If successful, the impact could ripple far beyond Kent. Cities across Europe could replicate the model, reducing landfill dependence and generating local hydrogen economies. Developing nations, where waste management remains a crisis, could leapfrog straight into circular hydrogen systems. The global potential is staggering, an estimated billion tons of waste annually could be processed this way, generating hundreds of millions of tons of hydrogen while cutting methane and CO2 emissions dramatically. In this light, Hydrogen Tay is not just a startup, it's a symbol of what the next phase of clean technology might look like, decentralized, circular, and profit positive. Unlike many green solutions that require subsidies, this one could stand on its own, feeding on the very waste that society pays to get rid of. It's hard to think of a cleaner business model than that. The film closes with a shot of the Kent facility at night. A soft blue glow emanates from within as plasma arcs dance behind protective glass. The voiceover speaks one last time, this isn't just another green project. It's a promise, that what we throw away might one day power the world we want to keep. The camera pans out to reveal offshore wind turbines spinning in the distance, symbolizing a future where every form of waste becomes part of the energy solution. Then the title fades in against the dark horizon, Hydrogen Tay, turning waste into hydrogen, turning problems into power. The credits roll with a quiet call to action, Africa emoji, discover how hydrogen, renewables, and AI are reshaping the next era of clean energy. Visit h2hub.reneenergy.com to explore real-world hydrogen projects, feasibility templates, and financing tools for developers and innovators leading the clean transition. Because in the end, the future isn't just about clean energy, it's about clean thinking. And sometimes, the biggest solutions come from the smallest, most unexpected places.